Greetings. I am on my way to Oryxburg, Pennsylvania, Schuylkill County. But before I go any further, I just want you to take a look at the surroundings. Take a look at the, uh, the fertile uh, soil, all the green growth here. It's going to mean something a little bit down, a little bit later. So I'm, as you can see, I'm on uh, 443 West. And as I'm showing you this, I'm going to tell you why. Why Oryxburg, Pennsylvania? Well, if there's any place that I would relocate to, it'd probably be Oryxburg, Pennsylvania. I like the uh, layout. Everything is level. The restaurants, little shops, library, churches, the baseball field to go watch a little league baseball. It's just a great place to spend a, a, a few hours there. They have a pond, like a sit and a bench. You know, I like the benches. So yeah, Orangeburg, Pennsylvania. And we'll get down through there soon. But before I get into Orangeburg, I am traveling through the oldest town in Schuylkill County, McKeensburg, named after Governor Thomas McKeensburg. This was settled in around oh, 1750. Germans started coming down from New York and of course I showed you why because of the the growing conditions the soil and has been ever since and as I continue through here you'll see some of the still some of the reasons why it attracted the Germans so much. I stopped here just to give you another look. Why the Germans came down from New York to set on this area? Of course, Orangeburg really wasn't too far in years behind McKeensburg. In fact, there's a story, a rival story about McKeensburg and Orangeburg that I will relate soon. In 1741, one of the first settlers in this area was Francis Yarnell a Quaker from Chester County, Pennsylvania. He married a Mary Lincoln, whose father was Mordecai Lincoln, who was the great-grandfather of our Abraham Lincoln. In 1755, Francis and Mary moved up into uh, this area. They moved up over by the uh, Schuylkill River, which is behind me. Mannheim Township and the Schuylkill River. And they set up home here. 
can you imagine the remoteness of this in 1755? When the German settlers began their expansion down from New York and started their farms here in this area, McKeensburg would be to my left, Orisburg to my right. The German settlers had to deal with a tribe of Indians called the Lenape. And it wasn't until in uh, 1753 that the Lenape pretty much had enough and they went to war with the settlers. In the old book, Old Schuylkill Tales, by Mrs. Ella Zerby Ellicott, I have a reading called an old underground passage on what was Heinrich Boyer's homestead near McKeensburg, where the heads of most of the families of that name in different parts of the county originated from, a valuable discovery was recently made. The early settler, Boyer, who settled here in 1754, whose log cabin stood for many years on the farm, had made, made many means of defense for himself and his neighbors against the Lenape tribe. He built and timbered an underground passage from the cabin to a tree some distance away where there was an opening and there was an exit. It was covered at the mouth with a big brush heap of uh, of trees and entered from the cabin by removing a log at the fireplace. So the Lenape uh, tribe, of course, they did a lot of killing, burning of homes in this area. And it went on for seven or eight years until the French and Indian War and uh, the British were able to, uh, to, to quiet the Indians down, at least here in this area. And Heinrich Boyer and his family then were able to uh, farm in peace. I am at the Manhattan Creek running through Orgsburg. What's going on with the Manhattan Creek? Well, way back in 1803, McKeensburg was given the honor of being the first town in Schuylkill County. But soon after, Orgsburg. And then a roost started, a battle of wage. What, who, which town was to become the uh, county seat? So the governor appointed some commissioners to come into uh, the area and decide that. And here again, I'm going to read from the old Schuylkill Tales. So it was related that when the commissioners appointed by the governor to examine the rival towns, Orgsburg and McKeensburg, arrived at the formal place, a ruse was employed to gain the advantage. Peter Fraley, Daniel Graff, John Cobb, John Deere, and Philip Hoy, and others induced the nearby owners of sawmills along the creek that ran along the borough to dam up the water supply for a period. 
At a signal from the men, the blowing of a horn, the floodgates were hoisted, and the Manhattan had such a supply of water that the commissioners concluded that it would be an excellent town for manufacturing purposes, and Orisburg became the county seat. <laughs> Welcome to America. Good afternoon. I'm here at uh, Fisher's Dam, as you can see. Fisher's Dam is in the town of Orgsburg, Pennsylvania. It's a favorite place of mine to stop and have a little lunch when I am out and about. And as you can see, it's right in town. Right up there is uh, 443. So it's a good place to have a lunch. It's a good place to come and have a book, listen to some music, take your dog around, bring your children. And this is considered the uh, lower part of Orgsburg, so I can say that I am on a lower street of Orgsburg. And I have a story to tell you about the first uh, boat that was built here in Orgsburg for the Schuylkill Canal. And to make it easier, I am going to read from the old Schuylkill Tales by Mrs. Ella Zerby Elliott wrote in uh, 1905. William Weldermuth built the first boat launched on the Schuylkill Canal. The boat was a small one with a capacity of 80 tons. It was built in 1830 on a lot next to uh, Dr. Douglas's home on the lower street of Orisburg. Wildermuth was born and raised near Landingville and learned carpentine in West Brunswick Township. He was encouraged to undertake the enterprise by Dr. Benjamin Becker, then a leading physician of the county. When the boat, which was one, the one only one ever built in that town, was completed, it was placed on a Conestoga wagon and hauled off the seven stars above Schuylkill Haven, where it was launched on the canal. The completion of the enterprise was made, the completion of the enterprise was made the source of great jollification. The people of Orisburg turned out to see the boat hoisted on the wagon. The mules that drew the wagon had red, white, and blue paper rosettes on their heads and the wagon and the harness were trimmed with tri-colors and gaily decorated. Horns were tooted as the boat passed through the town. The people cheered and many accompanied the procession to Seven Stars, where a large assembly of people awaited the event and a general good time was ensured. So from 1830 to about 1846 then, not only William Wildermuth, but also uh, Andrew Schwalm and uh, Samuel Leffler uh, built many canals uh, and were able to enlarge the capacity of all the uh, uh, equipment coming into uh, Orangeburg, into Schuylkill County and leaving. <laughs> 